As advertised, the uh, president has come out and uh, spoken out about the uh, Ryan budget plan. I want to get Peter Ferrara on here in uh, in about a minute and have him explain the conservative perspective on this. But first, just to set the stage, here is what the president had to say would be the consequence of Paul Ryan's budget. The year after next, nearly 10 million college students would see their financial aid cut by an average of more than $1,000 each. There would be 1,600 fewer medical grants, research grants for things like Alzheimer's and cancer and AIDS. There would be 4,000 fewer scientific research grants, eliminating support for 48,000 researchers, students, and teachers. Investments in clean energy technologies that are helping us reduce our dependence on foreign oil would be cut by nearly a fifth. If this budget becomes law and the cuts were applied evenly starting in 2014, over 200,000 children would lose their chance to get an early education in the Head Start program. Two million mothers and young children would be cut from a program that gives them access to healthy food. There would be 4,500 fewer federal grants at the Department of Justice and the FBI to combat violent crime, financial crime, and help secure our borders. Hundreds of national parks would be forced to close for part or all of the year. We wouldn't have the capacity to enforce the laws that protect the air we breathe, the water we drink, or the food that we eat. Cuts to the FAA would likely result in more flight cancellations, delays, and the complete elimination of air traffic control services in parts of the country. Over time, our weather forecasts would become less accurate because we wouldn't be able to afford to launch new satellites. And that means governors and mayors would have to wait longer to order evacuations in the event of a hurricane. That's just a partial sampling of the consequences of this budget. This is not conjecture. I am not exaggerating. These are facts. Yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. Peter Ferrara is with us. He is a senior fellow at the Carlson Center for Public Policy. The CCPP.org is the website and the author of America's Ticking Bankruptcy Bomb, the book. And Peter, welcome back to the program. Glad to be here. Uh, Paul Ryan was has responded to what you just heard the president say. And, and Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney are campaigning together in Wisconsin. Uh, have been stuck together like glue for the last four days. And Paul Ryan did not dispute anything that the president just said about the Paul Ryan budget. How can you guys imagine that you could win in America by saying that you're going to do those things that the president just described? That's just a Washington Monument ploy. Paul Ryan's budget just returns federal taxes and spending to their long-term historical post-war averages over the last seven years. Uh, he turns federal spending to the 20% of GDP, whereas under the budget proposed by President Obama and supported by the Democrats, federal spending is worse to 30% of GDP by 2027, 40% by 2040, 50% by 2060, and 80% by 2080. So the question before the American people is, do you want to restore federal taxes and spending to the same level of GDP as existed for 70 years after World War II, under which America became the most, the most prosperous and mightiest power in the history of the world, or do you want to massively increase government spending, ultimately to 80% of GDP? So do we want to take us, take us back yeah. to the era of Dwight Eisenhower when, when millionaires and billionaires paid 91% income tax, when 35% of total federal revenues were coming from corporations instead of the 11% right now, when, when the top 400 people were, did not own an amount of wealth equal to greater than that of the bottom 150 million. And, and in fact, here's what the president had to say about the budget that he submitted that you just said would end up with 80 percent of the federal, uh, you know, the GDP being federal spending. Here's what the president had to say. And I've already shown myself willing to make these tough choices. When I signed into law, the biggest spending cut of any president in recent memory. In fact, if you adjust for the economy, the Congressional Budget Office says the overall spending next year will be lower than any year under Ronald Reagan. And once again, Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney do not dispute that. Yeah, that sounds like he needs to report to a mental hospital because that's CBO was completely factually incorrect, according to CBO. The numbers He's quoting the Congressional, Congressional Budget, Budget Office. Office. Well, the numbers I gave you from the Congressional Budget Office and also in, in uh, uh, Ryan's budget, the Path to Prosperity, under the, under the uh, budget proposed by President Obama and the Democrats, 
Federal spending is worth to 30 percent of GDP by 2027, 40 percent. That's nonsense, Peter. That's absolute nonsense. No, not even his own party would support any kind of numbers like that. What you guys are doing is you're cherry picking numbers out and then exaggerating them wildly, first of all. Secondly, there is no way. That 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 this thing is a path to prosperity that Paul Ryan is proposing. I, you know, I, what I hear you doing is trying to put lipstick on a pig. I have not heard you dispute any of the things that the president said. My statement is not an issue over which reason people can differ. It's in the Congressional Budget Office. And it's in, look it up in Ryan's budget. It's published directly from the Congressional Budget Office. And I'll also leave you with this. Ryan's Medicare is better for senior, seniors than Obamacare's Medicare. It's better to get a voucher. Why, that's why... That's why he's going to be where, where you have to you have to take it to a private health pitch. insurance company whose CEO is making a billion bucks. That's going to be better for you. Cut, well, let me explain what it is. Obamacare cut Medicare payments to doctors and hospitals by five hundred billion. No, not true. That's a lie, Peter. Well, that's you are you are quoting problem. a lie that Mitt Romney told, and it's a lie. A statement, the five hundred billion dollars is not from Medicare; it's from Medicare Advantage. It's the it, no, it is no, the money no, that has been no, siphoned no, off to no, private no, corporations no, and is being in large part paid by seniors to Medicare Advantage. And what President Obama said is, "No, we the people, the government is going to cover this. We got it under control, and we're going to cut the costs." Well, I understand that you have to make a fact to justify your position, and that is what you do all day long. But what you just said is so egregious that I need an apology to your audience right now because it's, it's an, an abuse of the First Amendment. I am saying okay, that you are quoting Mitt Romney telling a I'm lie. I stand Romney. behind that. I don't even know what Mitt Romney said about Mitt Romney it. said that the president, that Obamacare will cut a half a, a half a trillion, $500 billion out of Medicare. And it simply is not factual. And then you, you just recited that. And it is not factual. This is not a statement over which reasonable people can differ. Obamacare cut Medicare payments to doctors and hospitals by $500 billion in the first not year true. alone. And it adds up to trillions of dollars over the long run. And not it's true. In the Obama administration's own reports, the Treasury Department issues a report, the financial statement not of the United true. States government, and it added up to trillions of dollars in cuts over the long run. So it sounds and, to me, uh, Peter, that, w- that the strategy, I, my original question to you is, how can you guys think that you're going to have electoral victories by running on Paul Ryan's budget that that basically slashes government down to nothing. And it sounds to me like the answer is that you're going to obfuscate or you're going to misrepresent what the president himself is doing and try to suggest that what the president is doing, on the one hand, is either taking us to 80 percent of all spending as the government, in other words, we become, you know, Sweden on steroids, a socialist paradise, or on the other hand, uh, the president is trying to slash Medicare to the point where seniors can't even get health care, which seems a little schizophrenic to me. Not all, not to suggest all, that you're schizophrenic, all, just the all, logic. All, all Paul Ryan's budget does is return, turn America into a long-term post-war historical federal spending as a percent of GDP. Lasted for That's nonsense. Years. Peter, who America? says a percentage of G- GDP should be any kind of criteria for anything? What, do you want to take us back to where we were in, well, in, 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 18, in 1800 when it was like 1% or 3% of GDP? You're not making any sense. I mean, you said the Brian budget cuts it down to nothing. And I explained to you it's the same level as existed for 70 years after World War II. So I proved you wrong. It's not a statement over which reasonable people can differ. Please take it back and apologize. You, no, I will not, because what the, what the well, Brian budget is going to do is that's it's either going to drastically, it's going to devastate the American middle class, or it's going to lead to massive budget deficits, because it's not being paid for. It has, you want to talk about historic budgets. Historically, millionaires and billionaires were taxed at 74 to 91 percent. Right now, Mitt Romney's paying 14.5%. How can you run a government when you've got the people who, who, are, who are sucking the greatest and using the resources of this country the most, who are using the court system the most, who are using you know to enforce contracts when they're paying no taxes? Ryan's budget is scored by CBO by reducing the deficit by 86% by the fifth year. And you're a despicable liar. All right, I'm a despicable liar. Uh, are, uh, all right. I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed Peter, to be on your show. Peter, actually. if that's the strongest thing you got to say, uh, you know, I, 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 I will leave you with the last word. You're not interested People in can read about it over at theccpp.org. Peter Ferrara. Thank you, Peter.